Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I am going to explain you system bus in computer organization. So first of all, you need to understand what is the meaning of system buses. See, system buses are having three major categories of information. First is address, second is data and third is control signals. So in this video, I will explain you each and every basic points which are there regarding system bus. First of all, you need to understand why we need to have system bus. See, when we talk about computer, then computer is having heart that is referred as CPU, central processing unit. With CPU, we are having microprocessor. Now, when you work with computer, at the time, you are not only working with computer, you are working with many things like CPU that is a heart of computer and with CPU, we interface memory, we interface input devices, we interface output devices and for those interfacing, we need to access system bus. Let me show you over here in diagram. You see here microprocessor that is written with this main block. So that microprocessor that you can say that is CPU of computer. With CPU, we are having ALU, we are having resistor array, we are having control unit. So that CPU will be executing instructions, right? And when we talk about computer, then computer is having heart that is CPU. But to work with computer, how many things that we need to have? We need to interface memory, we need to interface input devices, we need to interface output devices. So you see here, this memory that is interfaced over here with this CPU. Input devices like keyboard, mouse, that is what we are interfacing it with. CPU or you can say microprocessor. Output devices like monitor, printer, that we are interfacing it with. CPU or you can say microprocessor. So basically, in computer, when you interface IO peripherals or when you interface memory or when you interface computer in computer network, at that time, you will have to interface system bus. So now you got the point like when we interface computer with memory or IO device at that time, we interface system bus or when you interface one computer with other computer at that time also we interface it with via system bus. Now let me tell you how many things are there with system bus. See in system bus three types of information are there, address, data and control signals. After watching this video, it will be very clear to you like how exactly those buses are there, right? Like you are having CPU and that CPU is connected with memory. So when you interface that CPU with memory, at that time, what do you want to do? You want to exchange information with memory. To exchange information with memory, first of all, you need to have address at which location you want to exchange information that you need to know. So for that, you should be having address that address is been informed with the usage of address bus. Now, at that address, whatever data that you want to exchange, that is been identified by data bus. And to perform read operation or write operation, we need to send control signals, right? So that is how things are there. So here, if you observe, we are having CPU that is interfaced with memory over here. I have mentioned primary memory only in which you can have RAM and ROM. So you see address bus that is connected with memory input and output devices. Here you should note down few basic things. Like address bus that is identifying what? It is indicating address. That address is always generated by CPU. Remember this. Address is always generated by CPU. Here with memory, with input and with output device, address bus are connected from microprocessor towards this IO peripherals as well as memory, you see, right? So addresses are always generated by microprocessor or CPU. Now, secondly, if you observe, what is the meaning of this address bus? So meaning of address bus means what? At which address we want to communicate. So size of address bus explains you how much memory can be interfaced over here as well as size of address bus explains you how many devices that we can interface over here. For example, if you have 20 lines of address bus, then 
based on 20 lines, what is the size of memory that we can interface over here? 2 to the power of 20 means 1 MB of memory, right? So, 1 MB memory with 20 lines can be interfaced over here. Likewise, as if you have larger size of address bus, based on that, you can interface large size of physical memory as well as many other input output devices also can be interfaced over here. So, size of address bus explains you what will be the size of physical memory that could be interfaced over here. It is not like if you have 60 lines of address bus, then you will be interfacing 2 to the power 60 amount of memory always. But at max, you can interface that much amount of memory, right? And size of address bus also explains you how many input and output devices that we can interface over here. Here, one example has been shown. You see, for 16 lines of address bus, what will be the maximum size of memory could be interfaced over here? 2 to the power 16. 2 to the power 16 means 2 to the power 10 into 2 to the power 6. 2 to the power 10 is kilo and 2 to the power 6 is 64. So, 64k size of memory that we can interface as if you have 16 address lines. So, address bus is generated by microprocessor or you can say address bus is generated by CPU, right? And that explains you what will be the maximum size of memory that we can interface or it also explains you how many IO devices that we can interface over here. Then next bus is data bus. If you observe, see with this color data bus is been shown and in data bus, if you observe with memory, it is bidirectional. You can see with memory, it is bidirectional. Why? The reason is with RAM, we can read data as well as with RAM, we can write data. So, from memory, CPU may take data as well as from memory, we can insert data with memory from microprocessor. So, data will be bidirectional. For example, if CPU wants to read instruction, right, in that case, that data that will come from memory towards microprocessor and as if CPU wants to write data, then direction of data will be from microprocessor towards memory. That's why with memory, in case of RAM, this data lines that will be bidirectional. One more thing that you should note down, see, data is not like it is always given by memory. It can be given by memory as well as it may be given by CPU, right? That's why it is bidirectional. If you observe with input device, then input device will give data to microprocessor. That's why you see direction is like this. With output device, you see data will be given from microprocessor towards output device like monitor and printer, right? So, here my dear students, you should understand one thing. Data explains you at one address, what will be the maximum size of data and data also explains you in which direction we are communicating. Like for example, when you read from microprocessor, then direction of data that will be there from memory to microprocessor. When microprocessor write, write data at that time, microprocessor will give data to memory. And same thing that you need to have it with IO devices, right? Now, third thing that is control bus. So, I have already told you my dear students, control signals are always there with respect to microprocessor. For example, microprocessor is interfaced with memory. So, in that case, with memory, what we are delivered to do? You can do two things. One is memory read and second is memory write. So, you see that control signals that is being generated by microprocessor and it is given to memory, right? So, control signals are always generated by microprocessor or you can say it is always, always generated by CPU. So, it is generated from CPU and it is given to memory, right? If you observe with input device, control signal that will be IO read, right? So, you see control signal that is being given to input device, it is generated by microprocessor like this. So, in that situation, what will be control signal? IO read. IO read means microprocessor will read from input device, right? And in output device, control signal will be generated by microprocessor, you see, right? And here, microprocessor will give 
which kind of control signal i o write means on output device microprocessor will write what it will write it will write data how based on addresses right so remember one thing address bus and control bus that is always generated by microprocessor right and data bus will be bidirectional but that is based on whether microprocessor wants to read or write based on that direction will be there right and all together address bus data bus and control bus that is referred as system bus and with the use of system bus computer can communicate with memory io devices as well as computer can communicate with computer network as well that's why system bus is very essential you will be definitely going to get few one mark mcqs in competitive examination based on system bus video i hope it is clear to you still if anything that you would like to share it with me please note it down in comment box i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video